please welcome to the stage from Ghost, Matt Walsh. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, you guys are so lucky. I'm so honored to be part of this wonderful panel for a really funny, wonderful show filled with verifiably wonderfully nice people. I can say that. Are you guys ready to meet your uh, panel? Please welcome executive producer, showrunner, Joe Wiseman. Executive producer, showrunner, Joe Port, the two Joes. Sasapis, also known as Ramon Zaragoza. Trevor, also known as Asher Grodman. Hetty, also known as Rebecca Wasaki. Isaac, also known as Brandon Scott Jones. Samantha, also known as Rose MacGyver. Jay, also known as Utkarsh Ambudkar. Alberta, also known as Danielle Pinnock. Pete, also known as Richie Moriarty. Flower, also known as Sheila Carrasco. And last but not least, Thorfinn, also known as Devin Chandler Long. Wow. Yeah, I ask that they put the loudest person furthest away from me, so thank you, CBS. So, I'll get right to it. My question would be for the two Joes, if you could sort of set the table. You were asked to transport a, uh, an import British comedy, make it funny for Americans. Uh, tell us a little about your guys' relationship before you started this show, and then also tell us what was important to you to preserve and how you approached the first season of Ghosts. Sure. Uh, well, uh, and make it funny. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Joe and I famously hate each other, so this is very, uh, very different. Oh. Now, um, no, Joe and I have been writing partners for, what, 23 years, something like that? So um, when CBS sent us the format to, to translate to the, an American audience, we watched it, and within five minutes, we were, uh, we were sold. I just love uh, the tone of the show, the, spir the positive spirit, no pun intended, of the show. Uh, so that was important for us to maintain, that it is this... Very funny, but also very feel-good, uh, positive show um, that is hard funny, but also has a lot of heart. So I think that's the one thing that we were sort of made sure we wanted to uh, maintain. Yeah, and it, uh, it seemed like the kind of thing that was very uh, adaptable and, and had a reason to adapt for an American audience. Uh, you know, because we got to paint a canvas of all these, uh, with the ghosts of all these American archetypes and, uh, you know, um, teach people a little bit about American history while they're, they're uh, enjoying their comedy. Yeah, and it's a great way, obviously, because they're not from this time, is you can make fun of everything currently happening because you have to explain it to them all. And that's obviously such a great engine for your show. So a, a, a question for the wonderful panel, all of you, and, and any one of you, please kind of share your journey about auditioning for, your, for the show, what, what made you nervous in the process, how you approach the character that inspired them to like, this, that's my Hetty, that's my Thor. Yeah, Boomy, Boomy has a couple things to say. Go ahead, Boomy. Go ahead. It's an open-ended question, and I'm not going to talk for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and start it off. Uh, I got the audition the night before, and it was like four pages, and I was like, oh, I, think I, I think I know this dude. And I went in, and uh, in the audition room was the Joes and Trent O'Donnell, our director, one of our main directors, and it was the tiniest room I've ever been in. I felt like I was like straddling their legs, like it was a lap dance. And <laughs> it was, I dropped my line in the first take and I was so nervous. And then and they're like, no, nah, take it again. And we did it and I was sweating and then I never heard from anyone. And they're like, hey, do you want to work on this? And I was like, yes. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a lap dance is how it started off. <laughs> it felt like a lap dance. All right, that's a good uh, take. I, I, um, uh, I remember reading this um, the sides for this thing and them being so funny and thinking I, I just have to get out of the way because what Joe Port and Joe Wiseman wrote what, this, it just works and um, I remember uh, 
when we when I finally got the the job and you go through all the the, uh, the kind of roller coaster ride and I got to set um, our director Trent O'Donnell showed me his um, uh, his notes on the from the casting session and apparently I was the first person to audition for it and next to my name is he's great he'll never get it <laughs> really oh because I was the first one to audition he's like no way it'll never be this guy. Uh, and somehow, but the, the writing was so funny. From the second I read that first line, it was the summer of 98, my Lehman Brothers boys and I scooped a copter to beat the traffic. I was like, these guys, uh, these guys have it. They have it. It works. And how many auditions did you guys go through to get the part? I read twice. Twice? I think. Yeah, I was in New York, so I didn't, I, I, uh, everything was in the New York office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in New York too. And I, the, I, I flew out to LA, I auditioned with two other people. I got word that they didn't want the other two people. So I was like, oh, so I got the job. And they said, no, they need to present the network with two, at least two options. So now they're going back out into the casting pool to find someone else to audition against you. So I went back to New York. And then two weeks later, they found someone that, to audition against. And maybe this is, I, I shouldn't say this, but I don't care. Comic-Con, here Come we on. are. Am give I right? Him, give it to <laughs> them. <laughs> People love but, you. Like, the, team. the guy I auditioned against was like a, a comedic hero of mine. So I get into the uh, room back in LA two weeks later, and it I was see, Jim like, Carrey. Did, hey, Richie, didn't he offer you like Jim some Carrey? Oreos in, in the, the waiting room? Didn't <laughs> but, he offer you some like Oreo cookies? Yeah, he was eating Oreos, and he goes, "You want an Oreo?" So good. And I'm like, "Is this a power move?" <laughs> <laughs> Such a power move. Yeah. Like, no, I don't want an Oreo. <laughs> like black stuff in my teeth, and I go and read this. But uh, yeah, and then like a, uh, about a week later, I found out I got it. So cool. I that had, is a power move. That's totally a power move. Mm -hmm. I oh. had two auditions. Um, I was in the thick of the pandemic with mine and like was literally making focaccia bread and in pajamas like the rest of America. <laughs> <laughs> and child, they were like, you have an audition. I said, in a panoramic? Okay, let's do it. So, <laughs> it was a, a self-tape. And I was like, you know what? 1920s prohibition era goes, she got to wear a hat. We're going to do this. So I found this dusty ass hat in my closet that I was in a production of Major Barber in and put the hat on. It had this faux fur I got from Amazon. And I was like, this is going to be it. So I did my first audition with Joe Ford and Joe Wiseman. And in the audition, they were like, can we do another audition without the hat, please? <laughs> and I said, yeah, if that's going to give me the job, give me this job, please. So my second audition was hatless. And now who got a hat? Alberta. Okay. <laughs> Instincts. It is. You can't teach that. And I guess, uh, Brandon or Sheila, did you, either of you have a gut take on your character when you swung at that audition the first time? Did you have, like, an instinct, like the hat, or you tried something bold that maybe... You backed off of. I don't. I, I, I remember that when I auditioned, I didn't necessarily try anything bold, and, and to the point where I left the audition room and I was really, really upset. And I went across the street from the casting office. And when I tell you I ate the world's most amount of Taco Bell, um, <laughs> <laughs> think about that in your head of how much Taco Bell that is. So we're talking like upwards of nineteen dollars worth of Taco. <laughs> <laughs> Double it. I did $48, $38 of Taco Bell. Um, I was so sad because I just thought that I had really tanked the audition. And I called my team and they were like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. They're like, okay. Um, and then somehow I kept coming back to the, uh, to the show. So I didn't really have like a hot take other than the fact that he was a little, like just like a fun character that I would normally never get to play. So I think that's probably why I wanted it so bad. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I was really intimidated by... Uh, you know, flower going in and out of uh, being high and how to play that and it not be like an HBO, like super serious <laughs> drama. Uh, and so I was like, how do I play somebody that like doesn't know what's going on? I don't know what's happening. And that I just decided I'll just pretend like I don't know what's going on. And it kind of worked. <laughs> But a, a euphoria like spinoff for Flower would be really cool. Yes. <laughs> Seventies That's, euphoria, yeah. yeah, be super fun. That's a good point. So the the sort of emotional anchor of the show is obviously uh, Joy and Utkarsh. Now, how did did you guys ever work together? Rose, Rose, Rose. I'm sorry, Joy. I like Joy. That suits me. Joy. 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 <laughs> she brings us lots of you, joy. I, my my godmother's name is Joyce, so it's nice for her to get a little airtime here. <laughs> Had you guys ever worked together or met before? We had not met, but I was supposed to be at this guy's baby shower. Yeah. 
before what? it was shut down for, you know, and we're, are we allowed to talk about COVID or does it just not exist anymore? <laughs> yeah, no one here is wearing a mask. No one's wearing a mask. <laughs> what is COVID? <laughs> Once upon a time. Yeah, Rose and my wife worked together on Power Rangers because my wife is Kiwi. Uh, shout out to our Samoan security team. You guys are really protecting us today. Woo! Um, and uh, yeah, you were supposed to come to the baby shower. And I knew, I read the script and when I, I said to the Joes, Immediately, I was like, and Trent, um, there's this guy. Like, it's got to be Utkash Ambudka. And I text you about yes, that, you right? Yes, you did. Yeah, I remember, like, uh, our very first day of, like, starting this process, not everybody had been cast yet. And we were like, oh, I wonder who Jay's going to be. And I remember you at um, Jones on 3rd yep. saying, I was like, I really want it to be Utkash Ambudka. Yes. And yeah, I remember yeah, that. Which is really cool. And we just, yeah, he'd spent time in New Zealand, which is where I'm from, and his wife's a Kiwi. And we were just, like... It, it felt like it was always going to be him. It was just a bit of a process to get him. <laughs> well, we just didn't know if the show was going to be made. I mean, it took 18 months before we got to shoot a pilot, but I'm here 100% because of Rose texting me every three weeks like, come on, mate, you know you want to be. Borderline harassment, but here we are. And then it's incredible as... Oh, the little one's uh, sleeping. Our little Trevor falls asleep. Oh, Thank God how cute. for you all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so engaging that he fell into a coma. <laughs> um, you know, what's crazy is Sheila and I went to college together. We did a yep. play together in college. And then Richie was a senior in high school when I was a freshman. And um, it's just coincidence. And Richie, you don't even know this, but I saw you in a production. You were the lead in Hello, Dolly. I was Whoa. a freshman. You were Dolly? You were <laughs> he was Dolly and I watched I didn't even know it but I watched him in that play as a freshman in high school and I thought you know what I think I want to try that so I'm here literally because of you and now we get to do it what? Well, what? You here because what? Of me, just before. this is a yeah. great comic con nugget I love that it's amazing so that's, that's really it. sweet alright so I obviously think the show is very special I think there's many reasons why it succeeds I think you're all wonderfully talented you're so the way you speak through your characters is very unique and the dialogue and the writing is exceptionally strong and i also think your attractiveness are all attractive people on camera and that helps you tremendously as well in the tv game and i'm just curious if you after the first season of like the show is obviously a success it's like number one hit show last year is there something that you because you've all done other things that makes the show special to you or you have an idea of why this show is connecting with so many people like obviously there's all these different points of views maybe i'll throw it to you roman to start the ball rolling uh well for one thing i i just love these people like it's it's such a dream to work on a tv show and to be a series regular on a tv show but also to be working with people that you love to see every day and you know it's doesn't feel like work you know we just have so much fun uh, we bring so much heart to it because i think we really do care about each other you know we're kind of trapped up in montreal so we are just forced to hang out with each other and it's uh it's been great um and i, I think again going back to the heart of it like there's so much heart in the show and joe port and joe wiseman just bring that to the table and and uh you know specifically for sasapis bringing that you know lenape history and being able to cast my actual dad to play my dad in the show, like, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, they originally offered that to my dad. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, but yeah, he turned it down, right? Um, <laughs> my, dad, my dad's uh, very choosy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, it's just been so amazing to be able to also, uh, you know, talk to the Joes about, like, what I want in the show, and, you know, talking about that episode was so powerful, and having our Lenape consultant, Joe Baker, and John Timothy, who's Muskogee Creek, having him in the writer's room is just, it makes me feel safe, and makes me feel seen, and, and uh, I'm just so excited. We're going to dive into more of that, uh, that backstory, so, you know, get ready. Mm -hmm. well so, you, well one of your famous fans is Mark Hamill, he's a big fan of the show. Have you guys had any chance to meet him in person? No, is he here, Mark? Yeah. He probably is, maybe not in this hall, but he's probably down here. I've met Mark, and I did it doing uh, ASCAT at UCB. He was the monologist one night. Really? I point to Matt, because you know, he's the founder of UCB. Let's give it up for that. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be better at improv, because I called someone Joy. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so, one of the things, too, that I think is really strong about the show is that you guys slow play things. You're not 
resolving episodes in a trite way. You're not like, okay, he's gonna learn the big lesson and then we find out everything about this character. You tease it out a little bit. Like, there's a lot of mystery left with all of these characters after the first season. Like, Brandon, you, uh, you're sort of a closeted colonial, not mm -hmm. to stereotype you. Can I say closeted colonial? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, because that's me in real life as well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Grew up I in Maryland. I my own butter and I said, uh, never mind, can't say that. <laughs> But your moment with Hetty was very tender that you, she was the first person you revealed your secret to, yet you didn't run over to Nigel's cabin and sort of speak to him that same episode. And that's, that's what I'm speaking to. So with all of you, you've all had, like Danielle, you sort of found out you were poisoned, mm -hmm. for example, but we don't know everything about it. I'm just wondering, like, when you have these big episodes or Thor actually experienced guilt about a murder, which you later found out was just a squirrel, but it was still his <laughs> best friend. Star, so that's a revelation to an actor. Like, once you have these big episodes, does it change the way you play? Have you have you evolved the characters? Uh, you want to talk about that and sort of a. This is what lazy moderators do. They just no. throw open-ended questions. This is a good question, though. I feel. It is a great question. I'll, I'll take it. Oh, Rebecca, God bless think, you. Um, didn't I send you to hell, Matt? You did. <laughs> Our chemistry is off the charts, sexy. <laughs> Um, I, the Joes have been so wonderful in, in allowing, I like to say, allowing us to maintain our hypocrisy. There's something so great about these characters um, allowing to experience things that the rest of the world has come to accept as normal, but we can experience them in this very kind of childlike, sometimes very idiotic manner, which is very funny. And, and they let us take several steps forward in, in an evolution towards feminism or, or, or what have you, but, but they always allow for, for us to betray ourselves and take three steps back at the same time. And that, that keeps it fresh and it, and it keeps, it, it's, it's funny. It's funny to watch people try so desperately to learn a lesson and learn a little bit, but really run back to their hole. And so that um, it's kept a lot of avenues open and it's been very fun to play, for Hetty in particular. I think what's been really exciting is to stretch my wings as an actor on this show. For so long in my career, I was playing like sassy librarians, where it was like, uh-uh, we don't got that Harry Potter book. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so and to play this like really cool, delicious diva who may or may not have a crush on a guy who got an arrow in his neck, you know what I mean, who may or may not gotten poisoned, I'm like, this is everything. Give me the juice. <laughs> so I'm so thrilled for you know season two and what's explored with her murder, and I can't wait till y'all see it. It's mm -hmm. gonna be good. Well, Utkarsh and Rose, like, Rose, you're sort of the point guard of this show, if you will. Mm. You have the magic power. You see everything, and you're sort of wonderfully loving, but at times bumbling, hilarious husband uh, is always playing catch up. And I'm just wondering, like, as a function of the show, you have to literally shoot scenes twice often because you have to shoot his point of view where he sees no one, and then you have to put everyone in the room. So, and you have to probably remember eye lines too, Rose. Like, you have to remember all that. Can you guys talk about that process, maybe how you got better and what you yeah. do to like, I don't know, make it Rose so awesome? Is, Rose is like uh, Michael Jordan and I'm like the, uh, the equipment guy of the team. <laughs> no, I feel like um, it's, what is surprising is it's far more technical as a show than you would expect. Like it's a, a half hour comedy, it's 21 minutes and it's um, fast and so joke filled and packed, but it actually requires like, especially for our crew, it is an amazingly focused job. Like our boom operators, our focus pullers, they're working with people who innately surprise them at every turn and that's part of the magic, but it makes for like, um, just a, a lot more technical elements than I think people mm -hmm. anticipate. So and they all speak French, so we have no f clue what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but we I've do got, our best. I've, I've been learning fast, I can't backstab. Anymore. Except for I'm, Rose. I'm the, I'm the conduit to them as well. It's like I'm the conduit to the ghosts, I'm the conduit to the crew. <laughs> it's, uh, it's incredible though, right? Because Rose has to memorize everybody's positioning and their lines uh, on all these takes. And she's really doing uh, a masterful amount of work. Mm -hmm. uh, the heavy lifting that she does on a week-to-week -week basis for us is our engine and it keeps oh. us going. She deserves it, for sure. Thanks, man. Well, I feel like we just 
the whole company. We are so lucky with this team. We all genuinely are family. We like love each other and really care for each other. And I'm just looking out right now at these people and thinking, what a privilege it is that you guys all show up and care about the thing that yeah. we do. Yes. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So cool. So they, cool. They could be listening I, to Mark Hamill right now in some other room. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 oh. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who is that? Me. Yeah. Somebody. I just want to say, I remember um, shooting the second episode, which was the first time that we were up in Montreal, and there was a scene in the second episode where uh, <clears throat> uh, Rose's character uh, comes in and we're all sitting there, and she's like, okay, I can see you now. And basically like, makes a deal with every single one of us individually, and we probably took, I don't know, a few hours to shoot that thing, because you know, we had singles on a lot of people, and we had all these different cam camera angles, and then at the end, we turned around on a rose. This scene is like maybe three pages of dialogue or something like that. And she did her coverage without us there in like one take. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that was in the second episode. And I peaked. And ever since then, it's <laughs> all been downhill. I was still trying to impress everybody then, you know? <laughs> well, oh, thanks, man. Love you guys. Big hearts. Well, Utkarsh, let's not diminish your talent. I find you so no, funny. No, no, no. It's my Yes, turn. yes, yes. Your son needs to hear this. Daddy <laughs> is right. amazing. Wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. Daddy is amazing. No, you're so funny on the show, and you're so goofy, and you have a likable persona, which I'm sure is why they cast you right away. But you're also delivering tons of material every episode, and you're also, the like, sitcoms in American uh, many shows, it's the husband and wife that sort of carry the emotional, you know, story, and it's who we enter the show through in many ways. Like, I can't relate to a Viking, but I can relate to the mom and dad, or the, the couple. So I'm just curious, in your journey of the show, uh, I don't know, talk about what it's like to be on a show like this, and, and how you've evolved with that character, and, and as an individual, like, what, what joy you take in the things, or the, maybe even the things you've pitched to the Joes that got on the show. Um, the name Jay. <laughs> hey, um, is that no, right? You, you know what? The name Jay. Yeah, right. The Joes really are the lifeblood when it comes to my character, right? It's very difficult to write for Jay, to write for the one guy who doesn't know what's going on in the room, and it easily could have been the whole first season of Sam trying to convince Jay that the ghosts exist. But what the Joes really gave me as an actor to play with is this idea of unconditional love. Jay just goes with her. I mean, in what world does your wife go, I see a room full of ghosts, and you as a husband go, word, are they hungry? Like, <laughs> would they like me to cook some bacon? Oh, they smell, but they can't eat? Cool, they sit on couches, but they can go through walls? I'm for it, let's go. <laughs> and even for Matt, your episode, which was so well received, where all of a sudden the rules, right? The rules of the world. I mean, Jay is like me. I'm at Comic-Con every year, whether I'm on a panel or not. I just love being here. And Jay would be here too. Um, and so the idea that he's all about world building and he's really there to support his wife in, in everything that she goes through is what makes the relationship special. And it helps when your partner is um, working as hard as Rose is to make the show work. It, it really is... Um, a special experience to, to do this. And that being said, like I mess up a lot of takes because it's hard not to watch all these people. They're really, really talented, great individuals. Um, but that's why we get several takes to get it done. But I'm just, I'm happy to be here in yeah. the middle of it all. Yeah. Now to that end, you mentioned you're sort of a wor world builder. Are you, are you into D&D? Because that was one of the episodes or part of your character or any, any of the castmates or the Joes for that matter? Are you well, D &D? Please open up. This is your audience. Talk a little D&D. &D. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Ramon, I know Ramon plays it as well. Uh, I play it as well. I started during the pandemic uh, because I was, um, I was trapped in Florida for a little bit. Um, I'm so sorry. Of, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, it was, it was a rough, rough time. Um, and, and my friends were all in L.A. And, you know, we all just wanted to, like, catch up and see each other. So we started uh, playing D&D because one of my friends is, like, an amazing DM. And he was like, I'll, I'll teach you how to do it. And so we're, like, doing it on Zoom. And we just fell in love with it. It's so much fun. And as an actor, it's so fun. You just become, like, a character. Like, my character is uh, pretty much based on Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. 
Yeah, so Ohana means family. So like, I love Stitch, <laughs> love Stitch. And uh, so that was my character and I would like speak in that voice and, like, and it was so much fun and it was, I had no acting work at the time so that was my acting work and it was, uh, yeah, it's been great. And to do that episode, my friends were really, really excited, yeah. <laughs> It's funny, I, I teach acting at a college in New York, and I had one student who took my class um, and was a D&D &D person, <clears throat> and then uh, the next semester I had like seven people who were D&D &D people taking the class because they were all in, like, a, 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 is it a league or what is it, what's the term for a group of? A campaign. A campaign. They were all in a campaign. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> league. But they were all in a campaign with that person, and they were like, they got so much better. Cause, so we want to learn how to do We'll that. get him in there. We'll get him in there, there soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I join the group, too? I'm trying to come in as Medusa Jones. Can I make that character name up for myself? <laughs> Add me to the group. Who want to teach me? I'm ready. <laughs> um, I originated the role of Hitch in uh, fourth grade. Matthew Mercer was my... Uh, dungeon master, not a big deal. It's a it's a pretty huge brag. Wow. <laughs> Fifth level rogue. And Joe Wiseman, do you want to brag D and D here while we're? Oh on? yeah, no. Look, D and D has been a huge part of my life, my entire life. Uh, and so that that episode was really special to me to to not only feature it, but I feel like we we featured it in a sort of loving, fun way. But also the truth of it, like uh, my wife's not into it. Uh, and so I think, so, but that became part of the story, of, you know, uh, as well, and it was, it was fun. Uh, but yeah, no, d and is wonderful. My, my family, my wife, my wife actually got into it over the uh, pandemic. It was a bit of a social lifeline for a lot of us because it was something you could play and actually got me to connect with a lot of my old friends. Uh, and then my family got into it, and, uh, except my wife, and then she just, <laughs> but she just kept hearing us all laughing and having so much fun that she actually rolled up a character and joined, and she's part of the family campaign now. And is there a character over your 25 years that you've continued to play or embody? No, no, no I wish, I wish. You I return to one more than... I, have, I, I probably have all the stuff from when I was a kid. I can probably uh, dust one off. And, uh, and do you have a primary persona you like to play when you're not like running? I've been DMing a lot. You're DMing Which a lot. Is, you uh, like to be it's there. It's like show running. It's very stressful, but it's also very satisfying. <laughs> yeah. But I, I will say, I remember when we were shooting the episode, and we're all like around the table, and it was, it was so exciting. It was so fun. And then um, I think someone was like rolling like a D4. And I was like, yo, can you roll the D20? It looks way cooler. Come on. And they're like, what is that? I'm like, it's the one that has 20 sides. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Well, come on. Where are my D&D &D people at? Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> well, was there, this is a softball. Uh, was there a favorite episode for any of you? Obviously, you all have some of these backstory episodes, which are so great. But also could be another one. And was there an episode that sort of, surprise you guys in how it changed the rules of the show or we mentioned a little bit about Hetty's husband but was there anything that like oh gosh now we have to we've opened this Pandora's box and now we have to remember to keep track of that rule I loved the prom episode I loved ghost prom yes me it's too really special. yeah yeah it was why do you love it so much um I think it was it was nice to see or for selfishly Jay and Sam had a really romantic episode which was um about them connecting as a, as a couple too. And, and so it was really exciting for Sam's backstory, that episode, but also just seeing everybody, like that joyful end of year feeling. We were to work, like closing in on the end of our shoot year and everybody felt the like magic when there's the balloons and there's the ribbons everywhere and there's the expectation. It just felt like a, um, it was a very loving episode, I thought. Yeah, and the, the set was so festive. It yeah. felt like we had all gotten really dressed up and gone out together, even yeah. though we, hadn't actually changed our clothes at all. <laughs> so it felt really special. Anybody? I, I, I thought the possession episode was really fun and I thought it was good to uh, give Utkarsh a, a chance to shine and, and be involved and be yeah. able to talk yes. to people. Um, but, uh, and also I just thought it was special because, uh, you know, his portrayal of, of uh, being possessed by Hetty was also informed because Rebecca created such a strong character. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it, it really made me feel good about the cast as, you know, a cohesive group and it was fun to watch. Yeah. Utkarsh, can I talk to Hetty for a second? I want to ask Hetty a question. <laughs> can you channel Hetty? Oh, okay. Hetty, what is your favorite dessert? Um, uh, boiled... What? Oh, Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Hot 
Cheetos. Mm. That's disgusting, man. Hot Cheetos? Oh, Samantha. Yeah, the Cheetos. The shush. Oh, man, I can't wait for you to see what Hetty goes through this season, guys. It is <laughs> oh, yeah. unnerving. Having... It is very... She comes undone a bit. It, uh... <laughs> well, is there anything you two Joes can tease us a little bit about season two uh, that you want to... Sure. Uh, we have some exciting stuff coming up. Like, would anyone be interested in seeing Alberta sing in a jazz club in the 1920s? <laughs> yes. We're gonna, might be able to see that. Um, we're gonna learn a little bit more about, uh, well, everyone's backstory. We're gonna, we're gonna find out uh, there's a tree on the property that actually is as old as, uh, as Sasapis is and has a special meaning to him. We'll, we'll find out about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Woo! Uh, yeah, and we're going to find out about uh, a surprising connection uh, with uh, a ghost that lives at the Farnsby's house. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. good. Ooh. Love the Farnsby's. Ooh. Now, a, a lot of the ghosts, do all the ghosts have some sort of special power? Like, I think of uh, Isaac, when he walks <laughs> through someone, they smell, like it, a there's fart. a stink. It's yeah, a fart? Like a stink. It smells like... Um, have we described the smell on the show? Yeah, it smells Pucerate. like... Uh, Sm like Taco like Bell. Poopy pants. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taco like, Bell. $30 worth yeah, of Taco Bell. $30 worth of Taco Bell. <laughs> Not 19 but 30 <laughs> So does, does each ghost have sort of what I would call a special power? Uh, well, I, they do. We don't know what they all are. Like, we haven't revealed what they all are yet. So, so some that is have something not... that we are going to continue to explore. Can't promise that we're going to find out everything this season, but that is definitely uh, a big question. You know, we don't know Sasapis' power. We don't know Hetty's power. She thought for a second. Or do we? Mm. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, yeah, there's lots of fun mysteries. We're going to find out a little bit more about uh, Alberta's death. We're going to meet some suspects. Ooh, yeah. I love the mystery of that. No, it's so it's so in the first season you didn't know. Uh, I guess how much did you know, like where it was going? I know it's a hustle to write eighteen episodes. Yeah, eighteen, yeah. In Montreal with COVID, I mean, you guys worked fairly hard. I'd say. Yeah, they did. The cast worked harder, everyone, but you guys worked all. fairly hard. <laughs> everyone did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the first season had sort of a natural uh, destination, you know, mm -hmm. which was this young couple uh, building this, trying to get this house ready and, and to open up the B&B. &B. And so, you know, we're sort of uh, driving toward the opening of the B&B. &B. And now it's going to be open. And, um, you know, it's going to be the story of this young couple and their struggles uh, with this business now. And, uh, and, you know, the good thing about having these eight ghosts is, I mean, you do a couple backstory episodes, which are our favorite kind of episodes to do about each of them. And that's a big chunk of the season, you know? Yeah. And did you guys know that the B&B &B wouldn't officially open the first season, or is that just an evolution that you kept kicking down the road? We, we probably had that vague notion, but we, we kept it open. You know, you want to see, especially with the new show, like see sort of what stories evolve, and, and yeah. you know, as you learn more about the characters, that reveals more stories. But I think that was probably our, our general idea, was like, okay, the first season would be about getting the house ready, and now that it is open, we'll tell stories of you know, run, running a new business and the struggles that that can bring. It also allows us to bring in people from the outside are, can now stay in. You know, we're not, as much as we love New Heart, we're not gonna turn into New Heart. It's not gonna be guest of the week, but they will allow us to, to, to bring people in. Yep, and we're announcing it right now. Jean-Claude Van Damme <laughs> oh. is gonna be on the show. Did you say he's, he's gonna playing? play oh my, my dad? God. <laughs> well, this is the time to do it. Is there anyone the cast would love to give a shout out if they're listening to oh this, to come be on Ghosts? Lizzo! Lizzo! If you're listening! If you guys have contact to Lizzo. Great, 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 great granddaughter, Lizzo, please! I love you! <laughs> Buy her album, it's amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. We would love to be visited by the co cast of the BBC version, the original version. Yes! Yes! yes. Great. We would love that. That'd be rad. Yes. Al Pacino. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hua! Like, he, he just says hua over and over again. Trevor's grandson. We could get Al Pacino for your show. All right. Well, there's also another thing I wanted to show the fans here. There's a gag reel, which is always my favorite thing. Gag. Yeah. It's always my favorite thing with any show is just see people messing up. Before we show it, is there someone in the cast that's most likely to giggle too much and ruin the take? 
Asher. 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 Really? <laughs> With love. Uh, Dan, I'll cop to no. that for sure. He's the most ticklish, kind of. I'm the most ticklish. That's true. <laughs> yep. Danielle's, Danielle's right. Da I mean, Danielle's right next to me right now going. <laughs> when, once Danielle starts to, she <laughs> cries. She's a cry laugher. <laughs> and we know, like, if we've got her, it's the best feeling in the world when you get Danielle. But, like, it's going to be a 30 minute reset for her eye makeup. It is. So, <laughs> because she'll, like, stream. <laughs> It's I'm going to throw a new one in the mix. I'm going to say Richie. Richie's a giggler, too. Oh, yeah? yeah. All right. Richie yeah. just ruins scenes. He doesn't laugh at him. He just ruins them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Richie, could you stop just doing whatever you're doing? <laughs> I had two celebrity questions from guests on your show. I reached out to friends of mine, Rob Hubel, who played Ari. Yeah. And his question is, uh, hey, dudes, I'm in Montreal. You're not at Comic-Con, are you? <laughs> 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 it's not really a good question, but that is truly what he sent me. That's a, that's a good bit. Uh, and then Betsy Sidaro plays Nancy, Richie's uh, sort of love interest, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, with fake girlfriend. Yeah, fake girlfriend. Yeah, she's right. Sort of a, yeah. She asked, hey, have you guys seen a ghost? <laughs> that's a real question from Betsy Sidaro. Wow, Betsy, step your game up. What kind of question is that? Yeah. I've never. No. Um, okay, I think we have some lovely people. We actually just had um, a special visitor arrive. We've got two um, of our favorite cosplayers up here. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about that. Good call. I think we just need to address. We've got Flower. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh my God. Yeah. Hi. This is my daughter. <laughs> and who are you playing? Flower. Nice. <laughs> yes. yes. And you look good. Hey, dude. So cute. This is, um, this is Trevor right here. And this is Trevor. <laughs> Sleepy Trevor. Much like Trevor. My little not... brother. <laughs> <laughs> and like Asher, Boomy is wearing a diaper. Yep. <laughs> and Same. it's full. Yeah, you don't know that, but actually it's, um, it's a real thing. Uh, Asher wears a diaper. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we, we don't we get a lot of questions to buy about it. We don't. a big size jacket <laughs> to cover it. <laughs> Yeah, Asher wears a diaper and Richie wears a wig. That's, that's true. That's right. That's true. That's true. Bear uh, costumes are so specific. Tiara even has the bear scar on her back. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, really? Yeah. Sure. That's good detail. Look at that. Such attention to detail. It. It's so cool. Let's see the bear oh. scar. Hey. It is worth Hey, look at that. All right. Well done. Yeah. Full on commitment. All right. I think we have our first question in the middle there. Go ahead. Can you. Uh, Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to Comic-Con. We're so happy to have you here. Oh, we love the show. Um, I'd like to introduce my daughter. This is Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. And she would like to ask a question. Um, are there going to be any kid ghosts in Ghosts? Ooh, good question. Good question. Wow. Looking for a job? Wow. <laughs> Uh, it's, we don't have current plans for it. It is something we've discussed in the past. Um, it is, you know, there's something a little sad <laughs> about, about it, um, but it's, it's definitely something that's come up in the writer's room a lot, and we, did, we discuss it quite a bit. Awesome. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question. Great question. One of my favorite details of the show, though, is that kids can sometimes see ghosts. Yes. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Love that. That's a really cool way to that interact. That kids and animals can see us. Child having sometimes. to be. Yeah, the handyman's dead. son, right? Yeah. 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 And young, young Hetty, which is Happens. one of the coolest storylines. Yeah. That was one Love of my that. favorite things of the whole season, getting to play with Devin Chandler Long and seeing that flashback to mm -hmm. her as a, such a sad little girl and being comforted by her imaginary Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, go ahead, miss. You're it's next. It's a theme in books I read sometimes, too, where kids and babies can see the ghosts. Oh, yeah. No. Anyway, thank you guys. I want you to know I love your show. I think each of you does an amazing job of bringing your individual timeline to life, and I just think you're all amazing at it. So, and Rose, I especially liked you and iZombie. I want you to know that. So, thank, you. Nice. thank you so much. My question is for Asher. I just wonder if you've gotten tired yet of, and if you're going to obviously continue, shooting all of your episodes with no pants on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it actually, I think, keeps me kind of awake and aware at all times. So uh, I haven't gotten tired of it yet, though uh, December in Montreal is, is no joke. 
Um, <laughs> oh, I could say we've gotten tired of it, but exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's more about uh, us. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of comments from from the cast about it, and now we're playing basketball on set, so you know the things are just fortunately hanging out. between takes you wear those, oh, you know, between setups you wear those lovely two short sweatpants a little bit. You know, the ones that crop off a little yeah. high. I, no, yeah, it's, it's but Asher. Do you ever wear the sweatpants? <laughs> Not in supposed the summer. to. No. See, the the thing with the the no pants thing is, once you when you take them off in I've front of a crowd times. of a hundred people, uh, for the first five minutes you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> so the best strategy, unfortunately, for the rest of the cast is for me to keep them off, because mm. uh, once you're in the cold pool, you don't get out because then you realize how cold it is. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Great analogy. That had a, that had a, yeah. Um, I actually, I actually want to say you you brought up uh, episodes earlier, um, and I just wanted to jump on this. One of the highlights of last season was that Trevor's pants episode, and it was so cool because I found out in the midst of shooting it that it was inspired by Joe Port's dad, mm. who uh, outlawed hazing in his fraternity mm. at UPenn. Wow. Um, which, like, yeah. And we're not, like, we're not here to make social commentary. That's like not what our show is. But when we, we have these characters with this rich history, it's like a thousand years of history in this house with all these characters. And we can touch on things. And the Joes have this amazing way to, uh, of, of bringing us in with these laughs and then turning something as trivial as a pair of pants into a commentary on how we treat each other. So um, it's a, being pantless is an honor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's nice to be on a show with good writers, isn't it? Okay. Go ahead. Out Hi. There you're... <laughs> Hi, my name is Sam, and I have a question for the entire cast. Um, who's your favorite death, or who has it? Ooh, oh, good question. Favorite death. I did favorite research, death? and I didn't even think oh, of that. You mean a fa of the favorite death amongst favorite the Favorite death girls? of all the characters. Like, who died the most... Interesting to you. Uh, I could watch Richie die every single day. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pete. You meant Pete, right? I, oh, I'm sorry. Pete. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, man, right back at you, no pants. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, I liked, uh, Thorfinn's death a lot because yeah. it's so epic, right? It was powerful. It's just like yeah. just running through the fields, getting struck by lightning. Yeah. It so that was walking at a brisk pace, actually. I know. I remember. We also, we get <laughs> Thorfinn a bit doesn't of, run unless something's chasing him. We get a bit more of a look into some of the deaths, I believe, this season. We, we're still learning things. We don't know what happens this season. but like, How does, how does Hetty die? We, we chip have, away we at Joe's at events like this to learn more. Yeah. Do you have any yeah, we, big announcements you want to make? Wiseman? Well, we, uh, we've been talking about showing uh, Flower's death, which uh, she tried to hug a bear when, That's right. when she was on shrooms. And uh, we've been talking about that, and we were told by the production people that there aren't adequately trained bears in Montreal. <laughs> um, we've been trying yeah, to get the bear from Revenant, and he's unavailable. He's working, <laughs> so, so we're going to we're gonna shoot that episode last. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Honestly, Guys, you won an academy, so I, I guess if the bear from Revenant is listening Honestly, to this, we'd love to get you the on the agent show. that represents Just the bear. Just put Devin from in Revenant a bear costume. A I think we got ball. it. <laughs> Devin's half bear. Devin is half bear. It. He could do it. My I brother like... will actually be playing the bear uh, in season two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just any other deaths that uh, the cast wanted to give a shout Great out? Great question. Thank you, by the way. This is a wonderful question. Yeah, wonderful question. Thank you. Yeah, I love your buttons too. I yes. wonder what would happen oh. if, like, the favorite ghost would have the favorite power on when they walk through people. As soon as on all the episodes, we could see the power on what some of the ghosts, ha on what happens with some of the ghosts when they walk through people. Awesome. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 That would be yeah. very good. That's, That'd be yeah. Right. Yeah, Utkars, you want to tell us what, uh, answer that one? That was an amazing question. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. She's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, well have to wait and see. Joe's handle it. Yeah, season two, I guess we'll find out more of that. Um, I guess there's another question, please. Um, hi, I'm Casey. So, my question's for the whole cast. My question is, so we know that the ghosts can't smell. Oh, they can smell, but they can't taste. So my question is, 
What would the character's favorite food be? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. First day, I like, your, I like your outfit. Is that Umbrella Academy? Oh, yeah, it is. That's awesome. Yeah. Great show. Well done. Way to commit. Way to commit. Um, Sass loves pizza, so that's kind of like a little easy for me. But anyone else? And I I'm think Pete, Pete loves donut holes. Hetty loves Cheetos. I'll answer for Thorfinn, uh, 80 ounces of any kind of meat. <laughs> yes. Cod. Cod. Yeah. Or maybe a squirrel's brain and blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's I'm transported to the end like of the... A good southern baked mac and cheese. Like, I think Ooh. that would be her favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, Brandon just quietly whispered to me his might be beans. <laughs> 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 Any legumes, really? Legumes. Uh, okay. Thank you for that question. That was great. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, Jay and Rose, you guys are awesome. We, me and my wife love your show, and you guys are a great example of a modern romance where Aww. the partnership is actually a partnership. Uh, what is it that you guys do and interact with each other that helps build that chemistry there that feels tangible and real as a viewer? We are very open with each other about uh, when we communicate. Rose and I work in very different ways. I come from improv. We have different Perfect. jobs on the show. Um, Rose is very attentive to detail. She prepares. She's always ready. She gives 100% <laughs> to all of the other actors. And uh, I'm the opposite. <laughs> and, uh, and I think we've, we've just found ways to support each other. We know how we work best. We know how we work well. And we've genuinely learned to enjoy each other's success. I love when you're comfortable when you're having fun, and when you feel taken care of on set. Uh, if Rose is good, then I'm good. And I, and, um, Some would say, happy wife, happy life. Indeed. <laughs> no, we have fun. We're, um, yeah, I think, like, obviously, he brings so much fun um, detail and surprise to everything. And we really need that in the role of Jay. Jay could have been a very different character, and Utkash does an amazing job at, uh, at um, filling in um, this very nuanced character now, and I'm, I'm just grateful we all get to do it together. I think it's a really good mixture of people and approaches, and we all are learning each other more and more, because it's 10 of us, you know? That's not a small feat to have 10 people who all do bring different backgrounds, different technical approaches, um, and we're all just deeply respectful of each other and are learning each other's ways to, to get through these pretty big days on set. Yeah, yeah, and you let me play. Every now and then I'll look at Rose and I'll be like, hey, I'm gonna have to jump off script for a few minutes here. <laughs> just go play in the sandbox. <laughs> and she gives me she gives me my free time. <laughs> that sound awful. <laughs> no. Look, we got it. I hope that it was a compliment. That's Guys, sweet. Wonder Woman's here. Yeah. Hey, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I binged this show. The minute that it came on, I was like, what a breath of fresh air. And so I made my husband sit down and watch every single episode. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Such a commitment. And uh, one comment, then my question. So the episode where Thorfinn was, you know, calming you just gave me such feels. And you played that so well. I think you don't get to communicate as maybe clearly as others. You have to kind of grunt and do other things. And I think so much of the show's feeling comes from you. So thank you. You're doing great work. Oh. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So my question is, who is your favorite downstairs ghost? Because we don't get to see enough of them. Ooh. Good question. Oh, <laughs> in the cholera I, pit or whatever. I, I think I think there's going to be one popular choice for this, and I completely agree with that choice. So I'm going to let that be the answer. But I have to give a shout out. The first time that creepy Dirk came upstairs. Oh, so good. And and it's very hard to come on to a show uh, where the cast all knows each other, the crew all knows each other, the the writers and the director. Every, it's this oiled machine, and you're coming in as a co-star to say two lines. And it's like being a new kid at school magnified by 100. 
And he came up and, and said, when do I get to talk to the lady who smells good? <laughs> Nailed it every time. He and really it brought the house down. Yeah. He was, was so great. He's the president of, uh, of that house. Yes, Ew, he, yeah, was, he, yes. Oh, he was elected, <laughs> really really elected yeah. president. How um, many of you caught that uh, Richie is one of our cholera pit ghosts? Did, did, did you guys did know that? See that? In the pilot. In the pilot, Richie plays one of our cholera pit I don't think ghosts. we've ever talked about that publicly. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, it was shameful. Well, there goes that secret. <laughs> Been in episode two, right? Uh, yeah, in two episodes, I play one of the basement ghosts. Uh, oh. I don't obviously look anything like I currently look, but... Uh, but yeah, I think it was a bit, of, the Joes can maybe touch on this, but I think it was a bit of a COVID thing when we were shooting the pilot. They just didn't want to have more people on set, so they asked if I could double up and play one of the, the cholera victims. And I, I mean, of course, I was like, yeah. We were all cool. incredibly jealous. We were yeah. so fun. But Richie is also incredible at characters and impressions. Yes. yes. So I think it also was just a really great and smart casting to see you do that. Oh, thanks. Fun for everybody. Yeah, but it, it's been so fun. And that whole group of actors, we have a lot of like actors from Toronto, some from Montreal locally. They're, they're incredible. It's kind of a thankless job at points because they're just kind of in the shadows and most of them don't say anything. But they're all lovely working actors in, in Canada mostly. And then, of course, like Asher said, Betsy Sidaro, who played Nancy. Uh, and... and yeah. We love Betsy. She's just, we love Betsy. She's just a real gem and one of the kindest people on the planet, too. So yeah. love mm -hmm. Betsy. Yeah. Brandon, you were going to share something, I think? Oh, I was going to say uh, that thing about Richie being one of the ghosts. That's yeah. what I was going to oh, do. Oh. But I think that was, um, yeah, I agree with Betsy as a great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to talk about the vaccine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to share. <laughs> Summarize this whole panel for us, would you, Brandon? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, the, if I were to summarize the whole panel, I would say, a great time with great people, hosted by a great man. Woo! Wow. wow. Awesome. Well, your show is so successful for all the reasons. You all got to know each other, an intense working experience. You're also talented and attractive and funny, and the writing's spot on. So. Best of luck, and thank you everyone for Thanks, coming to this. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you, and maybe we'll be here next year, right? Fingers crossed. Hey. Thank you, everyone. Hey. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks so much. Thank guys. you, guys.